right now in homes all over the country, people like you are waking up, getting out of bed, and getting ready to go to school. Come on, you two. Isn't it time you got up? But just think for a minute what it would be like to have no bed that's really yours. And you, Christopher, come on. No bedroom. No home of your own. No parents, even. Some children, quite a lot of children, really don't have these things. Some kids, for example, won't get the chance of breakfast this morning. Some kids won't be meeting old friends or making new ones. Because we have homes and families and friends, it's easy to forget that not all children are so lucky. Many children have to learn to live with difficult problems. Problems that we can't really imagine. Problems that can put those children in real danger. First, some headlines. In Britain today, one and three quarter million children live in families where there's not enough money to buy proper food and clothes. Thousands of children live apart from their families because their parents either can't or don't want to take proper care of them. Every week, more than 2,000 children are in trouble with the police. That's the number who get caught, mixed up in some sort of crime. In many parts of the country, thousands of young people can't earn a living. It's almost impossible for many school leavers to find jobs, however hard they try. There are thousands and thousands of children who are mentally or physically handicapped. Many are not getting the special help they need. These are just some of the problems that children all over Britain have. Problems that cause a great deal of unhappiness. The good news is that many of these children are being helped. And I've been to take a look at where that help comes from and what it does. My first stop was Rochdale near Manchester. This is a very poor area of Rochdale, but there are parts of towns and cities like this all over the country. Many of the families living here suffer from the kinds of problems that I've been talking about. For a start, there's unemployment amongst the older people as well as amongst the young, and that means that many families around here are desperately short of money. Well, that's bad enough, but add to that the fact of having to live in such a depressing place. Problems get people down. Adults get angry and depressed, and they may take it out on their kids. And sometimes it seems that they don't even care what their children get up to. And the kids, well, they get bored and they run wild. The family home becomes a battleground. So families fall apart and split up. The National Children's Home has set up special centres where families and children can get help if they need it. Places like this. This is the Langley Family Centre on a huge housing estate near Manchester. NCH centres like this one don't hand out cash. Their help goes deeper than that. And although shortage of money is often at the root of families' problems, it's not always the whole story. Well, leading the project here is Pam Dial. Hello. And uh, Pam Hello. Uh, what sort of problems do you get here? Mostly unsupported young families without any um, grands or granddads in the neighbourhood. Sometimes we get young teenage girls here who don't know what their babies need to grow. Things like bathing and clothing, stuff like that. How do you teach them these things? Well, um, to begin with, we have to develop uh, a relationship with them before we can do anything. Well, we're very much a mum to them, very much their extended family, um, somebody they can confide in initially. We try hard to teach people how to budget how to produce food that is nourishing and cheap and which is nice. I think the children respond very quickly to the fun that they can have here and they see their own mums in a very different light than perhaps that they see them at home. They're much more relaxed because they have the support of the people around them and they can enjoy their children. So because the, the children benefit from their mums being happier and learning to enjoy their fun, and relax with their children. There are centres like the Langley Family Centre run by the NCH throughout the country where the poorest families can be helped. There are some families though where the problems are not shortage of money, food and clothing and a decent place to live. 
Some families, for all sorts of reasons, just don't get on. Without help, parents and children can drift further and further apart. Oh, it's a warm one today, that's for sure. Stephen Tintin Duffy and the icing on the cake. Seven minutes past 11 it is. It's Radio Air 362-828 kilohertz and also in stereo 94.6. And, of course, as usual at this particular time, we have a chat with Norma Rose from the Radio Air Care Line. Morning to you, Norma. Good morning, Ray. And how are you this morning? I'm fine. How are you? Not too bad. Has it been a busy week this week for it you? It has been a very busy week. Yes. So what sort of problems have you had? Well, one of the problems this week, of course, has been the build-up of tension about the school strike, and parents particularly are concerned about the kids. Who Whenever possible, the National Children's Home tries to rebuild bridges to help families before problems get too serious. Sometimes things can be talked out and sorted out. And that's what's happening right here. Radio Air is a local radio station in Leeds, and at the moment it's broadcasting details of a National Children's Home phone-in service. And anyone with family problems can phone in and get advice. The outlook is remaining warm and dry. Stay tuned, next program after the news. Norma. Hello, John. Another successful show? Yes, it was successful, I hope. And what kind of help can you give to your callers? We aim to give a listening ear uh, so that people can offload whatever it is that's worrying them because what may seem to be a very big problem to them may be only quite a small problem and they're stuck in it and they need to talk it through. Family care line, can I help you? There is a counsellor at the end of the telephone who would be willing to listen and support and advise, if necessary, on where to go for the best help. Because counselling is all about helping people to help themselves. The calls are dealt with here by a team of trained volunteers at the Family Care Centre. And the motto here is, if you can't talk to others, talk to us. And often, just talking to somebody on a telephone about your problems can be of great help. When families start to break up, parents are often so bothered about the family problems that the children seem to get overlooked. So they just hang around, wondering what's happening. School leavers often find difficulty in getting a job, and some of them do end up in trouble with the police. And that's when they really need help, and the NCH is giving it at places like this, at Salford, where we are at the moment. And they're giving it to people like Mike here. Hi, Mike. You want to leave then? We're going to find out uh, exactly what Mike's problems have been with the police and how the NCH is helping him. Uh, I've been up for about 18 offences. And uh, I was worried that I would have got a DC. What's that? Detention centre. But instead I got IT. Intermediate treatment. That's run by the National Children's Home, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll put your belt on and then have a look at the place, shall we? How does this place work? Well, we'd be here for half past nine in the morning. We'd go up, we'd have a break till ten o'clock. At ten o'clock, we'd start a group session. In a group session, we'd talk about an offence that we'd done. And we'd draw out a cartoon strip, and at each stage, we'd draw a stop point to say, could we have backed off at that point? And could it could we have stopped from getting in trouble? There's me taking a fiesta out of the car park. People would ask you questions, you know, why you've done it and stuff like that. And what good do you think that does, that sort of group session? It, well, it pushes it into your head, doesn't it? Like, why did I do that? And I shouldn't have been there in the first place and stuff like that. And the education session was like a break from offending, more or less. It was like to do with topics and stuff like that, what you like doing, like photography and all that. You've finished the course now, haven't you? Yeah. Have you been tempted to go back to crime? Oh, I have been. Some people have asked me. People have asked me, and it can't. I haven't known. What about your future now? What's going to happen to you? I've just been set up onto a YTS now. I'll start there Monday. So you think that this intermediate uh, system has helped you a lot? Yeah, a very lot. I wouldn't have got through without it.
Paul Coggins is the centre's project leader. Oh, Paul, what's the aim of this place? The idea behind the centre is to <coughs> offer young people a chance to come here on this programme uh, as opposed to them going into detention centre or youth custody centre, which are like junior prisons, really. Well, we've been hearing about Mike's story. How typical is that? Mike would be a, a very typical uh, example of a youngster that we get. He committed quite a number of pretty serious offences before he came here. And um, he, he's done very well whilst he's been on the programme. He's now finished and he's still out of trouble. So he's a success so far? He's a total success so far. And uh, certainly he's received a lot of support from his father, which has helped a great deal. We, we aim and we hope to give young people a new direction in their lives. Um, where hopefully they can move away from the sort of trouble that they're in when they come to us and have a more constructive future. All of the children and families we've met so far have got real problems of one sort or another. Fortunately, they're getting all the help they need to sort things out. With that help, let's hope that they can get back to living a normal, happy life like other kids. Some children, though, have to be helped to live with quite different sorts of problems things that we probably find hard to imagine. Because of illness or accidents, some children's brains or bodies don't work as well as yours. They can't run or play games. Some can't walk at all. They're mentally or physically handicapped. Some handicapped children have difficulty in talking. Some find it very hard to make friends or to mix with other kids. Some children find it difficult to keep up with ordinary everyday schoolwork. And some will never be able to go to an ordinary school like most kids. It's not that they're stupid, they're handicapped and they need special help. Special help is what's happening here. This lovely place is called Ebley House. It's out in the countryside in Gloucestershire. And here the National Children's Home takes care of mentally handicapped children and young people. Well, the superintendent of Ebley House is Peter Ogle. Peter, what are you trying to achieve here? We're trying to achieve two things, really. The first is we're trying to provide a home-like atmosphere. Uh -huh. The second is we're trying to help youngsters to become as independent as they possibly can. We have quite a wide range of abilities here. We have some who need help with the basics, like toileting, dressing. We have some who are much more capable, who can do things for themselves. And in relation to this, we've actually created what we call the Elmley Project. I'd like to take you to that now. Right. This is the bedroom. Nice bright place, isn't it? How many people in this project, then? We have three youngsters resident here. That's not very many, is it, really? No, it's not, but we believe that if we're training youngsters to be independent, we are in this particular group, that we need a small number so that we can spend a lot of time teaching them to do the very basic things to spend time to repeat things and have so some fun by the look of it <laughs> yes, yes who's this this is this is adrian adrian, adrian. Oh, hello john. who are you supposed to be then incredible hulk incredible hulk <laughs> you see you've got some green hair like him haven't you hmm? and you've also got uh, a nice little scar on there as well do you do a lot of these games here do you like playing games yeah and what else do you do what we do it we make some fancy Dress parties. You have fancy dress parties, do you? Do you go to school? Yeah. And do you watch television? Yes, yeah, so I always see you on that <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> well, in this programme, we've been meeting quite a few people who've been getting help with family problems in different kinds of ways. NCH is helping them to cope. Well, now we're going to take a look at another NCH project, which is slightly different. Well, the aim is still to help local children and families. Here at the Kendoa Centre in South London, NCH is helping people to help themselves. People gather here to make family life better for everybody in the area. Right, I've got them down on the list. We're meeting at five o'clock. Audrey Murray runs the teenage group. Okay. Right, see you later. Audrey, what kind of things happen at this centre? Uh, well, it's basically in three areas. We have a latchkey project where we're one of the home bases. Uh, we have work with parents and under fives, and then we have teenage groups, which happen in Beeslin. And if they weren't coming here, what sort of things would they be up to do? Basically, they'd be just hanging around the streets, around the flats, 
getting themselves in trouble. So. And how did they find out about this place? Um, most of our members come to us through, with some of through referrals from social workers or educational welfare officers or through people who know of us through various parents, friends, various routes really. And I think you are particularly interested in the teenagers, aren't you? That's right. What sort of things do you arrange for them? Well, basically we have four groups and they're all off to school throughout the week. We have a um, homework group, video group, a boys and a girls group. Um, basically, most of the groups are activity-based, which means we do, you know, outdoor things, swimming, go-karting, canoeing. And do they think of this as a kind of youth club, then? They regard it as their second home. You know, they feel really comfortable here. Um, they take care of the place. It's relaxing. They make coffee. It's like home from home. Sarah has lived around here for four years. She was here when local people decided that one of the things they needed was a decent play area for children. Sarah, you're one of the local mums, aren't you, around here? Um, why did you want this centre? Well, a lot of the parents in the area, they don't have gardens, and there's nowhere really for children to play. And this was an old scrapyard at the time, and we felt that it could be put to better use if we changed it into an area for the children to actually use. And how did the NCH get involved? Well, NCH run the centre, 20 Kendo, and they actually helped to coordinate the signing of the petitions and presenting the petitions to the council and going to the meetings to actually get things on the road. I mean, I've got under fives and it makes a lot of difference to me because before the centre was here, the area was here, my son would just stand at the window and look out at children playing in the street. I couldn't let him go and play in the street. And now he's actually got somewhere he can come and play and meet his friends and ride his bike and, you know, have some sociable fun. All the children and families you've seen in this programme have two things in common. They've all got problems, and they're all getting help from NCH. Other kids, more fortunate ones all over the country, have been raising money to pay for the help that NCH gives. John Gray is in charge of organising that fundraising. John, who pays for all the help which the NCH gives? You, the public. We need millions of pounds each year to support our caring work, and we therefore expect many people to do many things for us. And I think that you have a special junior club, don't you, for raising money. Tell me about that. Yes, it's called Action Bunch. It's for the 8 to 15s, and it's a club that one joins and receives information about our work, but also one gets ideas as to how to raise funds to do something about the work. Youngsters that join Action Bunch receive a membership card, they receive, receive a magic disc, and they receive Bunch Lines, which is a regular newsletter. It's a great club to belong to. And with all the help that NCH gives, you must have to raise a vast amount of money every year. Yes, indeed. We have a very big budget. And um, even though I say we need millions, every penny counts. And therefore, the youngster that has the collecting box, the teenager that organizes a sponsored disco, the adult that decides they want to take a covenant out for NCH, all makes sense. Indeed, even people who are making their will and say, we're going to help NCH because we want to do something for the future. And we believe that people who want to help NCH will enjoy it and therefore know that they're helping others enjoy life better. John, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, you've almost certainly never met the children you've seen in the programme today and never will, and thousands more like them, the children in danger.